Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today, we will be discussing the implementing site-to-site -site IPsec VPNs using the JWeb Wizard Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In this example, we have two VSRX devices, that's VSRX1 and VSRX2, and they both are connecting to the internet and they can reach each other through the internet connections. Then VSRX1 has user1 connected directly to it and VSRX2 has server1 connected directly to it. And so what we want to do here is we want to provide communication or a way for the two devices, that is user one and server one, to communicate with each other. And we want to make sure that communication is secure. And so what we need to do is we need to create a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN between VSRX1 and VSRX2. And we are going to use the JWeb IPsec VPN wizard to do this. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb for VSRX1 and get this started. All right, here is the JWeb for VSRX1, and we need to go to Security Services. We're in configuration mode, just want to point that out real quick. And then we need to go to IPsec VPN, and we can click on IKE Phase 1 or IPsec Phase 2. Either of those places will give us access to the VPN wizard. So we'll just click IKE Phase 1. And we can see up here that we have a button that says launch wizard. So we're going to click that and that'll launch the wizard for us. And here is the wizard. And we have the option to create a site-to-site -site VPN, which is route based. So we're going to go with that. Click next. And then we need some information. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to name the VPN. And we can call this whatever we want. We'll just call this J Web Wizard, since that's what we're doing. And then we need to select a zone. And this is going to be the protected zone. So we need to select, in this case, the zone that user one connects into, and that's going to be trust. And then we need to specify the actual network that user one is using. And that is 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Click the add button to add it to the field below. And then we need to specify some secure tunnel information. We're going to use ST0, we're specifying unit zero there. And then we're going to tell the wizard put this in the VPN zone. Now this VPN zone was something that was already pre-configured. All right, now we need to determine if we want an unnumbered or numbered interface. Here we're going to select numbered and type in an IP address to add to the ST0.0 .0 interface. And then the last thing we need to do is specify information about the public network. That's going to be interface giggy 000 and automatically it grabs the zone, which is untrust, and the interface type is going to be static. We're not using DHCP with this interface. Click Next. Okay, now we need to put in the remote gateway public IP address, and that address is 192.168.1.2, and then we need to specify the remote network that we're trying to get to, which is the network that server one is on, and that is 10.5.5.0 Click the plus button, click next. All right, so here we specify the IKE settings. Uh, we can set the security level for IKE. And we're just gonna put this at, let's put this at standard. You know, this is going to be the proposal group that we're selecting here. And we're gonna select, set this domain instead of aggressive as far as the IKE mode. And we're going to set a password of, uh, we're gonna use a pre-shared password. We're gonna set that password to Juniper. And for the IPsec settings, we're going to set the security level to standard, which uses the standard proposals. And that is the standard proposal set. And then for PFS, uh, perfect forwarding secrecy, let's use uh, Diffie-Hellman group five. And we're not going to select VPN monitor or dead pair detection in this scenario. Okay, so then we have some other settings we can set or just leave them at the default at any. And what this does here is this will configure your security policy to allow traffic based on what you want to allow. We could select specific protocols or applications. And here we're just going to leave this at any. So when it sets up the security policy, it'll basically allow traffic from the local network to the remote network through the tunnel. And it's not going to restrict it via the application. So we'll click next. And then we get a nice summary of what we're doing. And we could go through this if we want. There's Nothing too crazy here other than just the options we selected. This is actually a great place to confirm what you did. 
And so we'll click commit, and this goes out and commits the configuration to VSRX1. And then we get asked, do we want to create another VPN? No, we don't. And so what we'll do now is we'll jump to VSRX2 and create that side of the VPN because the configuration is already here for VSRX1. And we can refresh the page and we can see here that we have the configuration for phase one here. And we can go to phase two, the IPsec. We see the configurations there. So let's go ahead and jump to VSRX2 and make the configuration changes there. All right, so here is VSRX2. Let's go to Security Services, IPsec VPN, and then click on IKE Phase 1, and click the Launch Wizard button. And basically, it's going to be the same thing that we saw on the other side. So let's get this started. We'll work through it fast. We'll call this J Web Wizard for the VPN name. Select the zone. This is the local private network. This is going to be Trust. The IP address here is going to be 10.5.5.0/24, or the network rather. That's the network that connects to server one. Click the plus button, and with the secure tunnel interface, we'll say ST0. So we'll use or ST0.0 .0 using the unit zero for ST0. And then we need to set the interface zone to VPN. Again, that's pre-configured, so keep that in mind. We're setting numbered as far as the interface type for ST0. Set this to 10.100.100.2/24. And then for the public network, we'll select the Giggy 000 interface, and that automatically selects the untrust zone for us. And again, interface type is static. Click Next. All right, now we need to enter in the remote site information. So this is going to be VSRX1's information. And the remote gateway public IP is 10.10.1.2. Then the remote private network is 10.1.1. .1 0 slash 24. Click the Add button, click Next, and we need to set this to Main Mode for IKE, set this to Standard for the security level, and of course that's the standard proposal set, and then the pre-shared key, we're going to set this to Juniper, and then for IPsec, we're going to set this to Standard for the security level, which is again the standard proposal, and then we're going to use Group 5, Perfect Forwarding Secrecy, Click Next. Uh, we're just going to allow all applications. Click Next. And here is the summary screen. Let's go ahead and commit that. And then select No when it asks us if we want to create a new VPN. And we can see here that we have the IKE Phase 1 proposal, or excuse me, the IKE Phase 1 information set up. We can see the proposals. Actually, we won't see the proposal because we used a proposal set that's already predefined, but we can see the policy, the gateway, and again, we can go to IPsec, see that same information, VPN, policy, and of course, we won't see anything under proposal since we use a predefined proposal. Okay, so the next thing we should check out, we should see if the VPN is actually up, and so we can go to the monitor workspace, and then we can go to IPsec VPN, we can go to phase one, and we can see the phase one security association is up. Perfect. Phase two, we can select the IPsec SAs and we can see they are up. Perfect. Okay, we look at statistics. We can look at the information we see by bytes, by packets, and we really haven't sent much through the tunnel yet. Probably nothing yet. So there's, there's a few things that have gone through the tunnel. But let's go ahead and start. I'll start a flow through the tunnel. Okay, so we have traffic flowing through the tunnel. It is reachable on the other side, from the client device, that is. And so we'll just wait a minute and then refresh this page. It will auto-refresh every 30 seconds on its own. But let's go ahead and do it again. And we can see that we have more encrypted packets and, and decrypted packets. It is incrementing. Refreshing the page again. We can see again it's incrementing. So we got traffic flowing through this VPN that we created using JWeb with the VPN wizard. And one last thing I do want to show you, if we jump to configuration, we can go to policies, we can check out the policy, security policy, rules, we can see the different rules that it created. We can see in here there was a policy out JWeb wizard that's going from trust to the VPN zone. And then we can also see if we look at the VPN to trust zone, there's a policy in JWeb wizard. So the first one I showed was allowing traffic out and this one is allowing traffic in.
So that wizard took care of the policies for us as well as created the IPsec VPN. All right, so that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure site-to-site -site IPsec VPNs using the JWeb wizard. And then we demonstrated how to verify site-to-site -site IPsec VPNs using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.